fanned out by them. Double jungle bands coming through from Afrika. And Afrika's like, give us Nidalee. Yeah, we want to so first pick Nidalee, and if like you have to ban Nidalee, there is a whole hell of a lot available. Yeah, there is. Could be the Vladimir snatched up for Mickey, so... Vlad versus Nidalee. Playing the gamut, they're coming out on top of this one uh, right now, as far as we can tell. Look, Vladimir is by no means a free win champion, and Afrika in that awkward spot where you could get Vladimir plus Sivir on the KT side in exchange Ooh, for a Nidalee. This is smart. Okay, so they actually ban the Karma. So, so you get Vladimir gets first pick. Now Score can take the Nidalee. Score is an excellent Nidalee. He's only played it once this season. Didn't die. One MVP. Famously in an interview, he said the champion is broken. You have to pick it whenever it's available. Let's see if he behooves his own words. This was from last season. Nidalee's been nerfed a lot since then, but it's still Sin as the strongest of the jungle pool. They first picked Siva in game two, and they didn't get much value out of it. It was a great pick in game one. It's been a great pick in general for Arrow, but you have to deny away the Siva movement speed from Vladimir. Yeah, also did first round draft that for themselves in game one when they had the Vladimir. I think you take Trundle so. here if you're KT Rollster. You, you're willing to flex it to support. The reason why I say you take Trundle is it's great disengage pick, and it's a blocker pick away from Linderon. I, th I think getting the... Sivir is fine to keep it away from the hands of Vladimir. And then, of course, you want that Nidalee That's so they true. don't I, get the I was, Vladimir I was Nidalee. overlooking the Nidalee. I think you have to take it, like yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, maybe, Trundle. maybe in the second round, sure. then go for the Trundle and leave that last pick for the flex top support. Absolutely. Oversight but. from me, the Nidalee has to be secured, so that makes sense. The Sivir, did it have to be taken the first round? Yes, because of the Vladimir. We'll never know about game two, where Sivir was the overall first pick of the draft. That seemed like a reach, and that kind of was confirmed in how the game went. But Sivir is a takeaway pick, and Nidalee, just based on pure power, it's always a treat to see score on that champion. And now, action onto Afrika. What do they do about the Trundle situation, though? Do they feel the need to draft it in this round? Snowflower isn't ex extensively known for the support Trundle, but it's a pretty straightforward pick, and it definitely could be a consideration for Afrika. Well, right now, hovering for the jungle and the AD carry. What with the Rek'Sai and the Ash in that last game, Lyra did play one hell of a Rek'Sai. The repeat ganks on the Sunday, really just hammering in that lead for Linderong. We can see it is going to be Ash and Rek'Sai locked in for them, and now immediate hover over Aurelian Soul for Fly. I don't know about Aurelian Soul in the Vladimir matchup. You think about where we've seen Aurelian Soul. It's been Azir and Karma this season uh, have been the big picks where we've seen Aurelian Soul run. So moving away for now, will we see Fly visit the Rise that has been available but not selected multiple games in a row? And if they take Rise, will they fall into the trap that they themselves brought upon themselves of the Rise Fiora in the previous half? Because you have to think Afrika will just snap up Trundle and take whatever matchup they end up with. It's quite possible. But they're holding true with the hover over this Rise so far. Hachani having Arrow flip through a couple different options. Right now, resting on the Alistar, something that's certainly fallen out of favor in uh, recent patches, but looks like it will be Rise and Alistar locked up here for KT. So interesting draft, moving towards some stuff that we didn't really expect from them. I think Trundle will certainly be drafted on the side of Freak. It'll be a surprise not to see it. Uh, the support pick's a bit more open in the air. Considering uh. going for Irelia, that's a really bold move when Trundle's available for someday. And we always say things like this. Whenever you have a player who is famed for a champion on the enemy team, like, maybe we'll take this away. It's like, I don't know about this one. I mean, the other thing that I really would love to see if this Aurelia gets locked in for Linderong is the Renekton counter pick for someday up in the top lane. We saw Smeb play it. It went really well. Uh, I forget who was it. I think it was against Kuve, I want to say. I think you're correct, yes. And... I would love to see this one come out uh, for someday. It's been ages since he's played the Rennington now. Will they go with the Rennington? Lock is. it in. Okay, so All this right. is bold. It does, as you say, really lead to the potential of something like the Renekton, or maybe we'll go skill match skill match territory because you touched on this one before. Someday loves to Fiora people, but this exact draft is what got KT in trouble. It's certainly a strong draft. Having the Nidalee there makes it more powerful. When we've seen Hecarim versus Irelia, it's gone really well for the Hecarim, but this is Someday. You have to think Fiora is the expected pick, or will he dial it back? 
please. Yes, someday. Hachani, I don't care what he's saying to you in your ear, just lock it in. Let him deal with it. Renekton would also make some sense in conjunction with the Rise. It's an early game power pick to Tanky allow the Rise to scale. line as well as it goes deeper in. If you get the arrow onto the onto the Reddington, he'll be tanky enough in the late game to eat it, and it gets locked in. Someday on the, is he, I don't know if he's an alligator or a crocodile. The Lizard Man, we'll say. In the top lane, Reddington coming back out. This draft just makes so much more sense than the other options they moused over. You have someone with an on-demand stun with Nidalee jungle, so the gank pressure onto the lane is immense. You have someone who's powerful in the early game, Siva can wave clear, Renekton can apply pressure, and Ryze can scale. So compared to the Ryze Fiora comp they ran before, there's a lot more uh, smartness about the power spikes. They're more scattered, they're not all into the late game that honestly has been tricky for them to get to. So I like the draft from KT, but there's never any inevitability about a Renekton pick. We've seen Renekton's go big, and we've seen Renekton's go home. So can they actually get the 1v1 matchup? Level one could actually be critical here, because the difference between Renekton and the lane swap, and Renekton actually getting to apply pressure in a short lane with a turret behind him, and a potential turret to dive in front of him, is very different. Yeah. Wow. Well, I am extremely excited. We're getting two very powerful picks on the side of KT Rolster someday with his Renekton and then Nidalee for score yet again something he has not been able to get his hands on for quite a while makes it through the draft and looking at this KT Rise Nidalee on the same team they've come out pretty well from that pick ban it's a really strong draft against the Aurelia expected when you do draft Aurelia against an Aurelia specialist like someday but 2v2 is always the case when it's an Aurelia matchup. Lyra decided top lane in game two. He's going to have to try and do it again. Because otherwise, Score and Someday could really run away with this game. Yeah, Aurelia and Trundle, very different champions. We'll see how Linderong is going to come out on this very carry heavy top. Let's go ahead and get right into the game three. All right, oh, it just had to happen. All right, well, we got Triple Mountain Drake into an Infernal in game two. I suppose we can go ahead and start one of them with a Cloud Drake. But here we go. On to Summoner's Rift for game three. Tied one and one between Afrika Freaks and KT Rolster, who want to maintain that first place spot. Afrika trying to climb out of that pit that they've been in, known as seventh place. And to reiterate, the storyline of this season, KT's run of five consecutive best of three wins started with beating Afrika. They had lost two series in a row. It looked like another one of those Many seasons where KT would so fight her to deceive, but they came back strong in that series. They won it comfortably 2-0 and have not lost a series since they've dropped isolated games, even against weaker opposition like CJ Entis. But now they're bringing back the Renekton. And we talked about the importance of level one, and so far it looks like Afrika are in a good spot to get that lane swap. Moving them up, meanwhile, it's gonna be Score and Someday working their way through the jungle. So, in all likelihood, this could just be a tower swap between oh both boy. of these teams. Freak have done this a lot this season. They're looking for the cheese. Oh boy, yep, just sitting in the brush. Something Tasty hasn't spotted cheese. anyone yet. Of course, this is a Braum, and they can very easily Here we get go. the sun out. Here they come straight in with the exhaust. Someday only taking that Q. He gets stunned up. Flashes away. Might actually be able to get out of this one. And he will get out with his life, but barely so. Flash down for him. And that's going to make laning very, very difficult for him. But will there be laning? Uh, flashes in these jungle follows, in these uh, lane swap scenarios, are a little bit lower. Now, Afrika may once again try to force there to be stand like oh, 2v2 lanes after the first turret goes down, then they will be relevant. True. But really nice play from Afrika. Sanyun cancelled one auto attack, but he didn't actually have kill pressure. So all in all, nice play. Luchani does his best to steal and actually does have some experience. Yeah, he gets a good amount of harass down onto Lyra as well. You can see he rotate up to the top side for Linderong as they try to get onto those towers. 
Sivir with the wave clear might be just a little bit faster, but overall it's just everything crashing pretty much at the same time. You won't get a replay of the top lane because no kills went down, but the smart thing Afrika did was they waited. They waited so long. The moment that someday actually committed to the minion wave, they figured he had skilled Q, they saw it as they came out of the brush, and they're like, wow, we have serious kill pressure. That's why they open with exhaust and the flash auto attack and Q from Rom. They didn't quite get the kill, but it was that waiting game that got them the maximum out of that situation. The only issue that's going to be there is, though, is time wasted by Sangyu not CSing, which gives a bit of a lead over to Errol on the other side of things, who's up by about eight. So it's not the end of the world getting that flash down from someday. Certainly going to be a very important thing, but it doesn't come uh, completely free. Said the early game was about holding back the Renekton, and you have to say, successful on that regard, even if they've had to. I mean, if it's come at a cost, it's one of those shallower costs. No kills, yeah. no summoner spells on the Ash. So, in general, pretty damn good start for Freak of Freaks. And we get those towers traded out in top and bottom side. Gold just really separated by a couple hundred right now. Difference really going to be bu building up in that mid. But this is the smart thing Afrika does, is they're going to force 2v2. They want to go up top. They're willing to overextend a little bit for it, but to actually get Aurelia in the lane against a Renekton without Flash. Renekton does have, of course, the dashes, especially if a minion wave is there. Yeah. But there is kill pressure now because of that lack of summoner if Rek'Sai does path to bottom lane. So oh. KT had to start pushing just to match tempo, but Afrika are pretty happy this come. They can freeze. They're in once again a really smart spot. And this is two games in a row, and I think teams could really look to this because there is definitely in many scenes a lot of mindless turret trading. And if you can get a big advantage from swapping back, that could be significant as Mickey takes a lot of damage, but was never realistically going to go down. Yeah, still has a Sanguine pool there. And of course, just an immense amount of it innate sustain. Spear going to come over the wall, but Mickey does spot him with the Tremor Sense, so is able to juke out. Score going to clear a couple of these tunnel systems and rotate over to this top side where the bottom lane of Afrika is still hovering nearby. Lyra's in the vicinity. Could help turn around a gank should one come out. But looks like and he's going to send Score back into the jungle, get him farmed up, get that first jungle item in, and then he can really start wreaking havoc around the map. This time Lyra wasn't actually interested in helping out the Aurelia, so looks like the flashless someday will not go punished. Score instead is going to be clearing the jungle. Lyra spent most of his time just trying to protect on the top side, possibly because the Vlad got so low in mid lane. Yeah, yeah and I'm sure someday is going to be very grateful for that reprieve because he goes back. Looks like he's going to be looking for the Titanic Hydra, given the items so far. Could be Black Cleaver as well. Could just go straight for a Black Cleaver. That's true. It does synergize. Extremely well. Tiamat's always been a required item on Renekton, though, so probably going to have to be the Titanic Hydra. Oh, well, trade going back into mid side. Fly gets a double root down onto Mickey. And runs out of answer out, but he's, yeah, he's out of mana, so not going to be able to follow up too heavily. And of course, Mickey is just Vladimir, so he's going to be safe to stick around, but Fly going to have to focus and try to get a little bit more CS in. Has been hovering 14. Minions down so far in this lane. We don't see a lot of Renekton, so I'll go over the famous interaction that makes Tiamat a required item on Renekton. It's famously that when you apply your W as Renekton, the stun, if you're not, uh, not familiar, the Ruthless Predator, I believe it's called. Yes, it is. There's a mini stun on yourself as you do it, and activating Tiamat cancels you out of that animation and allows you to move. So you get an extra auto attack in. You can potentially kite forwards or backwards during the CC effect, which is only very short, unless it's empowered. So Tiamat is never an item that you can skip as Renekton because it's so core in his animation canceling and in his kit. I think that when Smeb played it, he actually didn't go for the Tiamat. If, I, if I'm remembering correctly, he might have gotten it late. He built it But I know that was. he didn't get it first item. He went for what the Black What does Smeb know about top lane anyway? I don't know. <laughs> Probably nothing, just garbage player. Well, we were <laughs> reviewing from 2013, and that's when Smab is definitely <laughs> some of those things. Well, well. Mickey actually went really aggressive yeah, on the fight. His ghost good. is traded for Fly's only ex escape. That's a really good trade for Mickey. Yeah, very good, getting that flash down on the rise. So good aggression by Mickey, and 
that shoves fly back out of lane, does not have the TP available yet, so he's gonna have to waddle back, and he's just gonna fall that much further behind in CS. Now about 20 down. Not many junglers that actually want to gank for Vladimir in mid lane, but the guaranteed CC of the Flash on Burrow, when they force the pressure out, his score just tries to steal away the blue. I'm actually not clear where it went. I think it went to Lyra. Wait, hmm. no, it did not. Did it actually go to Vladimir? It must have. Unless it's invisible. It disappeared. It could be a hidden feature. Oh, another hidden feature? I think we might have found one. Well, blue buff's gone, guys. I guess maybe one of the supports got it? I think I just saw it on score on our second monitor. Nice. Okay. Yep, he does have it. So it's on uh, this main monitor. Our production monitor lies to you. We so do not have... Spectator 1 is a liar. Spectator 2 shows the truth. Maybe but he shows it about four seconds earlier. Spectator 2 is just a big purveyor of the hidden feature. Yeah. But, all right, so it did, in fact, go away to score. Because that was really confusing as to how Mickey would have been able to get that blue buff. But. It rises at the point where the mana pool is not going to be an issue. It's Lyra. Oh, yep, so they're going to get jumped on. Has that ultimate available. Uh -oh. Does use the dominance, but the TP is coming through from Fly, and Linderong's already really low. Flash is in, but the root comes through. That will be a flash forward by Lyra to follow up, get a kill, but Fly has plenty of damage. Johnny and Arrow on the way, already popped on the hunt score, trying to cover the wall, but he pale jumps, has to flash over, throws a javelin, it's not going to connect. So that was a bit of a, a botch play there by the Nidalee, but overall, that is going to be KT coming up with first blood, but still suffering a loss onto someday in the end. Look like more invested by Afrika, so that's a slight win for KT, but it's only one summoner we're talking about, and Sangyun gets free time on the top minion wave. 10 CS fans, nothing to write home about, but we'll deny a bit of CS to Sunday. Yep. Arrow really far forward, does have the rest of his team, or a couple members resting above him as that spear does land onto Linderong, right as he dashes through, takes his, it's about half of his HP in damage, but has that disrupting potion available, so he'll chug up on that, and he'll get healthy yet again, and maintain that wave by the tier two tower. Phage is the second item, which again could be Black Cleaver, but it's worth noting that it just be building in as oh. Ash Arrow. Yep, Arrow comes out, but Fly's gonna juke out on that. Lyra dashes forward, but it's unable to find the knockup, and Efrika are gonna be sent packing as far as that gank goes. Fly finally starting to crawl back a little bit with this wave. It's only gonna separate about eight minions, I believe, between him and Mickey, so is making good use of his time to equalize that uh, gold as much as he can. So has flash down for it's about a minute and a half. So with double summoners up on Mickey, still a chance that Lyra could pull off a turret dive in the mid lane. For now, though, just farming his top side jungle. Yep, we will get this 2v2 yet again in the bottom side as Arrow comes in to face Song. He's been falling behind a little bit, has the call. So we'll get a good burst of gold once that's finished stacking. Which should be pretty close. I can't really read the number. Mickey though gonna get jumped on throws down that emo plague on the fly. Lero's waiting in the wings. He's gonna get a good little burst of health back from that pop, and he will remain safe. Achani roaming up toward this mid side will get spotted by the ward. And they're not gonna be able to find a pick. Yeah, yeah. He used the lesser of his two escape summoners, the ghost, which only has that three-minute cooldown after the last tinkering of the summoner spells. But so. he will down as well, so that does open up Fly for a bit of heavy-handed trading. And he's had a couple of little things that went his way. When we saw the counter kill and bot Lyra had to flash to get the answering kill, so suddenly you feel a bit safer as Rise. Now the Ghost being down, you feel that little bit safer. He's time to get that CS back as oh. Linderong. Yep, Linderong up front here. Somebody goes in, gets the stun. They chunk him out. They go deep underneath the tower. They're gonna take that one up there for someday, and they take down the Aurelia. Nicely played by KT. And just good sneaking gank by score to find themselves their second kill. But it's the sort of gank that was smart, and the sort of gank that was not on display in game two. Yeah. They're finally pushing up a big wave. And Aurelia oh wants to claim it. Ashar was gonna go. That was just the hawk shot, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just the hawk shot. It was Lyra and Snowflower roaming up. Thought maybe they try to go for something, but. There's no damage. Yeah, there. no roam coming out from Mickey, so they're not gonna be able to find any uh, real action up top. But Aurelia always wants to surf onto the wave to start getting those last hits. You can just queue onto the ranged minions to get the reset on the ability, but punished instantly by 
Danilli, nice play someday. Used his flash, they guaranteed the kill. Again, that was absent in game two, and they paid for it in that 1v1 matchup. But on full display in game two. Yep. In game three, sorry. Good. A really good job. Z Fly completing the Rod of Ages now, so still keeping pace with uh, Mickey's that we saw on his Cassidy early on. So it's going to be about 23 minutes, 22 and a half or so before that item becomes fully stacked. Spirit Visage has been completed by the Vladimir. So he's going to be soaking up a good amount of damage that this rising output. But with the amount of spells that he can spam, it's still going to hurt quite a bit. Lyra walks oh. forward, gets the ward down. This time we can see the blue buff. It does go over to the Rex eye. So nice little takeaway there. It's another blue buff denied from the rise. It stops him from being able to shove with the increased ult cooldown. Suddenly the tier. wave clear is not great for the rise. As you mentioned, the tier comes closer. At the same time, they get the turret low, but they can't take it down just yet. Oh, well, someday she's going to get locked up by that arrow right into the Glacial Fisher, but he can stun on the Linderong. And a huge amount of damage coming through. They lock up Sung and He's going to go down. Score finds that kill. Meanwhile, Fly taken down Linderong, and everybody's just following suit. The Javelin not not gonna land, but they find three off the back of that TP play. They're gonna equalize that turret in mid, and KT come out wildly on top of that trade. Just really smart fighting while Renekton is still incredibly far ahead of Aurelia. Renekton can pop his ult, do AOE damage, has gone for so many early stats in the Phage and the Warhammer, and Linderung still building up. Linderung still very squishy, and the Renekton being able to out team fight the early damage from Score. And to blow this game open for KT. Yeah, they might finally turn their attention to this lonely cloud break. 14 and a half Arrow's minutes. Like, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> you deal with that. I'm not going to do anything. Fly just flashing away from that arrow off the they bat. Use so many resources just to slow down someday. And he's still in the middle of the team, doing a lot of damage. He's got so Dominus. many early stats. Exactly. Dominus is popped. Afrika, very overextended. Remember, they don't even kill the one HP outer mid lane turret. Baited in by a really nice lane ward from KT. Yeah. Oh, wow, you're right. I thought that turret did go down. But nope. Yeah, so KT definitely coming out on top of that one now. Not 2.3. It's okay. Mickey does walk back up and finish it off with a couple autos and the help of that wave. But even so, KT Rolster going to find themselves with a bit of a gold lead here. Up four kills, even in turrets, and now having that cloud break at their disposal. Didn't catch a glimpse of what the next one will be, so next time we glance over top of that dragon pit, we'll have to take a look. I'd really love to see Infinity Edge first. It's probably going to be the Essence Reaver from Arrow, but an Infinity Edge crit profiting off a rushed Black Cleaver from Renekton, who instantly applies all those stacks, would be deletion damage, but perhaps doesn't even need to invest so much into the IE. Such will be the armor penetration shred from Renekton. Difficult for Linderung to enter lane. Look at the trades here. They're going to be super one-sided. Yeah, difficult for a kill. So one thing. Yeah, somebody going to go ahead and pop. The Dominus is eating that turret. Uh, he didn't uh, the turret. I would say fall, finish off the turret. Has full rage, though, and look <laughs> at the damage. All right, someday. I'm sorry for doubting you. You do whatever the hell you want. He well, just either that walks. was intentional or it worked anyway. I'm going to say intentional. We'll give the benefit of the doubt to someday, the god of Renekton. He didn't clean the turret, and you're like, wait, what's going on here? But that trade damage with full rage was insane. Yeah, that was a ridiculous amount as he just punches him in the face and knocks him out. He says, welcome to Earth. I mean, that's probably pretty fair to Linderong, who had his way with someday in the previous game, and now the shoe's very much on the other foot. 3-1-3, three, and three, Trinity, sorry, the Black Cleaver into almost the Ravenous Hydra. Trinity Force completed for Linderong, but... Already a difficult matchup to begin with on paper, and certainly not one that's going to go smoothly for Linderong on this Aurelia. All right, well, this is this is topical for today. Here's the movie. Have you seen Independence Day? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? I've seen Men in Black. Right. That's got Will Smith in it. The other Will Smith and Aliens movie? Yeah. One out of two. Well, that explains why you didn't catch my Welcome to the I saw Men in Black 2 as well. It wasn't great. No, it wasn't. I didn't see three. I heard three was actually really good. Well, I haven't seen it. I can't. I can't vouch. For okay, that. maybe not really good, but I heard that it was. It was. Re it was good. Come on, we we have to be very clear with our verbs on this broadcast. Okay, but how about this? Have you seen? This, I, I swear this does coincide. Have you seen Twenty One Jump Street? Ah, uh, no. Oh. Okay. Well, they're actually making Twenty Three Jump Street, and it's going to be an official crossover with Men in Black. Really? Yeah. That's so the you, third. So we get Jump Street. Movie, Channing, right? Yeah. So we get Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill fighting aliens as they become part of a Men in Black initiative. 
There's going to be some interesting tone in that movie. With I assume this is going to be That movie's going to be amazing. It's going to be a very strongly toned film as far as Men in Black goes. Because they are usually lighter films. But meanwhile, KT pushing into this tier 2. So is just going to go deep. Gets on to Linderong. Almost takes him down. Dashes forward with slicing dice. And is able to finish him off. Meanwhile, Hachani from the backside gets a double pulverized Snowflower with the Unbreakable. Looking like he's going to go down. But they just turn straight on to Mickey to pay more attention to him. First flies, able to pick up the kill. Lear comes in. Flies taking up this tower. He's going to go down to this last shot. I think he does. But KT use him as a sacrificial lamb, and they take down the remaining members in the area. Snowflower able to limp out with his life, but they take three more plus the tier two, and they are looking so very strong. The only problem is it's so early in the game, they can't even go do Baron. Yeah, that is a pretty crazy thing. They just know their power. They know exactly their damage output. Someday is a veteran of Renekton play. Rise piles on. They have all this Pixie C Alistair combo, the Renekton W, and the Rise Root. And then when they go down, they have the early items because they've snowballed to pick up these kills, not worry about turrets. Fly dies, but it's certainly no big loss given all the gains they picked up. That's the outer turret down as well. Now 4,000 gold. KT in full control. Yeah. This is such a turnaround from both game one and two. In three very different games, I think. If yeah. You track back. Uh, a massive throw from Afrika. Sure. Strong dominance from Afrika. Yep. And now strong dominance from KT. The random sampler. If we had another game, you know, if this was a best of five, then we could yeah. see the strong. Don't. We don't we need best the of five throw. regular seasons we can see over the, here. The big throw from KT rolls. We've got six but. days a week. We don't need best of five regular seasons. We cannot do that, Achilles. <laughs> I know. I'm just happy as long as we don't have ties. I mean, we're wearing a tie. Does that count? No. Okay. This is piggyback clothes. Ah, uh, yes. It doesn't count. We, we have regular time. Oh, boy. Someday, though. Well, Slice and Dice won't get away from that arrow. Linderong's trying to chase in. The stun somewhat, someday he's not scared. He's just going to go right back up, try to take down the Aurelia. Lyra is there, but he just doesn't give a damn. Bring me more, people. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. More of you wishing to sacrifice yourself to me. Some days a raid boss at this point. Two yes, items, Titanic is. Hydra, Black Cleaver is just insane bursts of damage. You only have Ninja Tabi for defensive stats on That would be a good series of skins. Raid boss. They have final boss, Viger. That's fair. So why not do, like, raid boss? That's a good question. I, I don't have an answer to you. I think that would be really good. Just start making them for all of the, the Juggernaut characters. Ah, yes, the Juggernaut characters that are all so relevant. Like Garen. Bring him back. Darius, another Juggernaut. Uh, I miss old Garen. Do you? I do. I, th I liked old Garen more than I like new Garen because they gave him a cool mechanic and then they nerfed him into the ground. So it's like, cool. Thing. I can't enjoy that new mechanic. I would rather have my old Garen that was very situationally okay. You mean the Riven situation? Well, he was pretty good against Riven. Renekton used to be the... He was, he was the crocodile hunter to the Renekton oh, of the top lane. There's always a Garen waiting in the brush. That's true. That's the big worry. Mountain Drake was well, the second it goes down. It's going to be another Cloud Drake here. And one can only assume that it will be picked up by KT or maybe even just ignored because right now they're on a war path to close out this game fairly quickly. They have good scaling from the rise, so it's not like they're on a timer, but their power is just such at an epicenter at this point. Oh, Lyra, waiting in the brush. Yeah, he gets stunned up. Doesn't get the pop up on the Sunday who dashes back, just trying to secure this blue buff. Achani coming around the side, does fine. Mickey pops him up, takes a good chunk of damage from the transfusion. Arrow gets hit up, however, it's gonna be straight through the Hemo Plague. Another team up, the TP coming in from flying the backside. Mickey goes in deep, can he find the kill? Achani is gonna go down to the Ash, he's just firing off this volley. Song, able to find a triple kill. Now it's gonna be score. And Arrow just trying to retreat as best as they can, but Afrika Freaks feeling confident enough to go over to this Baron with Someday and fly dead. Can Afrika actually zone score away? He got in smite range as Gragas before they turned around to fight. He's an over level over Lyra, so there's a real chance of a steal. There's the one Javelin finds Linderong. Linderong still just tanking up in the face, and score cannot go in for the steal. Actually, probably would have got it with that early smite there from Lyra, but Afrika Freaks. Coming back in, getting two kills, and now a Baron. Just at a swing that no one could have seen coming. The big story there was Mickey was able to bait out the spell shield from Sivir 
and then Ash could just instantly arrow her. They took her down, even though she was on the backside. She had zero health, couldn't be involved in the fight, and Sung Yoon was free hitting as Katie ran away. Early spell shield really cost arrow. Very nice enchanted crystal arrow from Sung Yoon. That was difficult to explain, but Hachani <laughs> takes free damage. And compared to every other fight where it was someday deciding when they were going in, the Ash arrow came through. Sung Yoon free hitting in the back line with the Hurricane. No real armor purchased yet for someday or anyone on the side of KT. Big win for Afrika, but certainly not enough yet to put them in the driver's seat. Yeah, but that was a really massive turnaround and definitely gives them an opportunity to come back into this game. Of course, going up against that Mountain Drake from KT, certainly going to make things difficult, but having that Baron, having those empowered waves to push back, stave off sieges from KT, it's really going to buy some crucial time here for Afrika Freaks to farm up and get these big items that they need to try to come back into the game. You can see Song Yoon with that Infinity Edge and the Hurricane ripping through the members of KT, finding that triple kill. It was looking like he might have been able to get the Penta as Arrow was extremely low in all of that, but just couldn't find the opening onto him or score as they were able to successfully retreat. But wow, what a turnaround coming in and now 2.7 thousand gold, all that's separating these teams when KT was just ahead by about 5,000. And someday certainly not interested in building any armor. You can see components of a phage as his next purchase. So for now, no sign of a Randall as it's desperately needed. Score won't be able to itemize armor. Armor will come later for Fly. There's not been a single cloth armor picked up on the side of KT, and he, that means that Song Yoon is deleting people. He could be going for a Sterics gauge. Again, armor is just so important here, though. Achilles. I agree. I just don't think that he's going to be getting a fade for a Triforce. You're right. But still, at this point... But your point stands. The Longsword is clogging up his infantry. That could be a Cloth Armor. That could be a Chain Vest. Even a Guardian Angel would be something. Yeah. And Void Staff is already almost completed for Fly. That will be his next 1,300 yeah. gold. If they choose any fights and can't find a way to take out Sang Yoon, I mean, Hurricane, uh. Infinity Edge, now the Zeal, Sungin will cut through the front line of KT Rolston. As uh, displayed, he's definitely having a strong performance here on this Ash 3, 1, and 0, having over half of their kills. Arrow's been participating, but hasn't been able to secure any for himself. Secret Agent Arrow, 007. Yeah, just hitting them from the shadows with ricochets, getting his assists in. Arrow gets used, and just checking the brush. I guess Hawkshot was on cooldown. But this is smarter from KT. You notice in the bot lane, Aurelia just has to sit under turret. She doesn't have the vision. She certainly can't walk up to someday, so that yeah, armor... He will destroy exactly, her. Exactly. That armor not consequential for someday in the split push. It's He's... only in the 5v5s where they find a way to trivialize Arrow that Africa can repeat the fight that we just saw from her. Yeah. Someday is closing in on the Flame Horizon. I mean, 4, 2, and 6 means he's got a lot of kill credit, so he's yeah. pretty close to doubling the gold of this Aurelia one way or the other. Oh, very strong showing down by a little over 25 at the moment to cross that mark, but with the waves crashing in to Linderong, I don't think we'll see it. But this is good from KT, though. They're buying time. They're not getting aggressed on by Afrika Freaks. You can see the Baron buff has expired, so they weathered the storm. Afrika weren't able to pick up any of really objectives off of the back of that take. And all they're really going to get for is just a little bit of gold. But I kind of object to your line up there. It's good they're buying time because Afrika didn't have any time. There were no minion waves they could get to because they kept dying to picks from Someday, picks from Score, picks from Fly and Hachani. But they've gotten that time from winning that last fight. They're building armor, so Randuin's now completed on Aurelia. Randuin's coming in for Rek'Sai. These are items Afrika realistically should never have got access to because the game was so much tempo-wise with KT Rolster. So True. even though they're buying time, they're only buying time for KT to finish more damage items. So there still is that same world where one Ash Arrow and Sang Yoon free hitting Afrika still win a team fight. This is very true. We can see the Void Rush going to be used by Lyra. So this Cloud Drake does spawn up. Spot score with the Tremor Sense and shoots a Prey Seeker at him. Not going to be able to connect. Someday roaming up to this top side and looking for Linderong. Of course, will be able to interrupt. Both of them can interrupt with those stuns and try to stop the other from teleporting. At Arrow gets used. Ooh. Nice flash away. That's like the last pixel there for Fly that he could have done that. Score will be able to hop out of the wall. Mickey Bale flashes, actually, and is now in the pit. So 
two people are going to be failing to get over that wall and results in a flash. And that should buy a little bit of time here for KT. Somebody still up top with the wrong. Roaming down the lane, looking to just walk in and join his team. Dragons down below half HP. KT, KT have to play this really carefully. Arrow will, uh, or rather the Ash will be able to confirm that kill. He's coming through, Mickey getting jumped on something, getting popped up like a bouncy ball. Sounds Has to dash out, Hachani as well going low. Mickey goes into the back line, finishes off someday. He is out of the fight now. Arrow's gonna go down, fly, looking to be the last one to fall. A freak of freaks with the ace coming through are gonna push straight down mid and try to get as much as they can. It's 28 minutes in. Don't think they can finish, but they can definitely get an inhibitor or two off this push. Another fight, another fight where Sang Yoon is free hitting, can flash aggressively to get kills. They in no way are answering the Ash. They're not targeting her in fights. They're not targeting her with itemization. So Sang Yoon in the back, there's all this focus on Tilira. He takes damage, then Mickey gets into the back line, and it's another case of Vladimir doing the work. They just focus on to someday. He has to back out. And even though Afrika are falling low, this is just absolutely licking his lips from Sun Yoon. He flashes for the kill on the score. No one can turn around because the health values are so low. And Mickey on the sustained damage, Vlad. And just the fact that Sun Yoon's free hitting means another team fight win to Afrika. And this is looking like Afrika are going to be able to close out this game. Inhibitor now down for KT in the mid side, and Afrika finally swing themselves into a gold lead, albeit not a very large one, 1 1.4 thousand to their favor, but still looking really strong. Baron now respawned. This is going to be the battleground. This is going to be the stage for the end of this game, I feel. I just love how game one and game three have been basically from dusk till dawn. You think you're getting one thing. You're like, all right, they're being smart. They're playing around. And then there's, it just goes another way. I thought for sure Afrika would take down game one. KT stole it away. I thought KT had set up super smart in this game. And Afrika, out of nowhere, two team fight wins. And a lot of it, I think, is on KT and just making questionable decisions and not focusing down that ash. Is that a movie that you've seen yeah. from Dust Till Dawn? That's why I quoted right. a movie. I know you love movie references, Achilles. I love that movie, especially. Robert Rodriguez is a very bizarre individual, but my God, if he doesn't make a I realize I just, good movie. I just spoiled Dust Till Dawn. Sorry, really. guys. Not really. You didn't mention. If you had said something about a certain <laughs> character on the side of Africa, it might have helped give way to what happened to that movie. No or so. Baron being started up the ski by again. Afrika. This they thing is getting absolutely there. shredded by Song Yoon. It's down below half. Arrow comes out, locks up someday. They're looking for a score, but it doesn't even matter. The spike gets confirmed there by Lyra. Mickey gets chunked out, but has a massive pop from the Hemo play coming through. No flash on Lyra, so no way to initiate. Afrika, man, one thing they have to take away, they are terribly bad at actually goalkeeping around these Barons. Every enemy jungler seems to get within smite range because they're just not using their resources to hold off. But with the minion wave pushing in mid, AT don't go for the contest. If Nidalee had died there, it could have been the end of the game. They reset, but what do they reset to? They're suddenly 3,000 gold behind in a game where 10 minutes ago they were in full control. Yeah, this is just not a good spot here for KT to be in. Now second Baron going over to Afrika. And you can be damn certain that they are going to make some strong pushes this time around and actually take some structures. Tier two up in top, looking like it's gonna be the first target that they set their eyes on. Super Creep still pushing in to that mid lane where the inhibitor is down. We'll be respawning soon, but that does still buy them a good amount of time. And Linderong, meanwhile, with that TP available, is splitting up bot. So Afrika trying to push on all fronts and get as much of a lead as they can. One champion that's been synonymous with victory this series has been the Vladimir. One of the reasons I talked about picking up that Trundle, uh, apart from the strength of the champion, how he's a blocker to a lot of these carry top laners, disengage is not something KT have at all. Honestly, they're an engage only team, and everyone flashing aggressively often means five man Hemo plagues. Like in Vladimir, Death Cap in tow. That's immense damage that so far has gone pretty unchecked. It's Ash run away real fast like they're trying to do right now. Hachani does get locked up and gets out of the stun with the ultimate. We get stunned up now by the concussive blows. Gets a pop up on Nira and should be able to exit. But the Glacial Fissure comes through and they will be able to finish him off as Linderong finds the killing blow. TP gonna be canceled out by someday. 
Certainly would have been a death sentence had he completed that one. And now Freaking Freaks with a support down on the side of KT. They're going to push in. Lear goes in deep. Pops up on the fly. Who has to flash away. Out of respect. Somebody going to get locked up. And he goes oh, close there. Gage gets popped. But look at the damage from Song Yun. Oh. Rips right through him. And score is going to follow. Now with these Super Greens right in the mid lane. And Freak of Freaks are going to take down KT Rolster. Or look to here at the 33 minute mark. Linderong dashing forward on the arrow, who is desperately trying to clear out, but Song Yun's still here. He's relatively healthy, and he has a hell of a lot of damage to offer up. The turret getting shredded. Hachani coming back in. Trying to take him down. Lyra has Void Rush back in full HP, getting shredded out by the Nexus. Now exposed. Song Yun exhausted, just hammering away at this one. And a freak of freaks will take down KT Rolster 2-1 in a great way to kick off the summer split. Just round a crazy, two. crazy game. And yes, if that sets the tone for the second round, Robin, we're in for a treat. It was an interesting first round, Robin. And let me tell you, this storyline of the upsets continues. A freak of freaks upset, a five series winning streak from the team that entered this, the top. I believe now they may actually go behind in game score of Rock Tigers, or at least give Rock Tigers even extra incentive against SK Telecom. In a few days' time, Vladimir ran away with this game, and yeah. KT will wonder how it happened because they were in such strong control of the early game. Once again, the exact parallel of what happened in game one, and the result goes against the team that controlled the flow for the first 25 minutes. And KT, what a heartbreaking way to lose that match. Just not able to come out of top. They